So, when we talk about kickoff coverage, kickoff return, we're still really old school in our thinking. You know, if you look at it, guys, when I coach kickoff return, if the ball's kicked in the end zone, we take a knee. Because you get the ball in college at 25. Is that true in high school also? Still the 20? You can't average 25 yards on a kickoff return. Very rare for you to do that nationally. We average about 21.3 this past year. So if we kick the end zone, we're taking a knee. So we're really talking about field position. What are your odds of scoring if the ball you start inside your own 20? What is it for high school? You guys know? Yeah, not College is one out of 30. One out of 30. So when you watch Ohio State drive 90-something yards against Oregon, it's like, what? I mean, that's hard to do. Really hard to do. So if it's kicked in, you know, we try to kick that ball inside the 20. The team has a 1 in 30 chance to score. If it's 20 to the 40, it's 1 in 8. So there's a big difference in terms of field position. So what we do, what we're trying to do is three different stations. Coach, we got to yep. get some I'll young, get guys, here. young guys up here. We'll get some people. He's sitting in the back because he's worn it out already. <laughs> All right, we'll break that. See, I'm going to work out. I get, Bruce, come on up. You can do this because you know some of it. <laughs> like that. I'm going to come up. Like that. Okay. When, when you're setting this up, Coach, I just want to say, one of the things that you guys, if you don't do, I'd suggest you do do, is work on your ball get off on your kickoff team. Videotape it. We videotape all parts of our practice, and that seems excessive, but you know, hey, guys are doing it for a living. But videotape that to see where those guys are in relationship to the time of the kick. And it works so great to have videotapes. You can just adjust that. You can meet with your kids. You can send them a huddle and just say, you know, it's not, it's not rocket science. Speed up a little bit, or slow down a little bit, so you time it up. And if you have different kickers, obviously you got to work with those guys. So time it up, videotape that to see if they're hitting that line as a ball kicker. Okay, cool. I love it. And, and I, I've served on a committee for about, I don't know how many years now, where I work with our officials in, in our league. I do all the prelim film work. And one of the things I do know is I get some of their interpretation, which is kind of crazy sometimes, what they're thinking and what we think as coaches. But if it's a normal kickoff, until the body is completely past the line of scrimmage, they won't play outside. So we basically work all the time. We rarely work full kickoff, but we'll work just that get off. And our whole thought process is, we want to end up when the ball is being kicked, basically with one foot inside the line. And we just and you won't get called. And now, if you're going to go for an onside kick, then you better have both feet behind the line. Okay? And that, they're very specific and they will not, they will not call. We've never been called. We'll have, we're pretty consistent. I went back and looked at all our phone from this year. We got almost everybody sitting there straddling the line when the ball is being kicked. I'll take the extra. We got some slow guys, so we got to make sure we work to get them down the field a little bit better. We have three stations we run with our kickoff team whenever we have our 10 minute period. Because we'll only do about three full kicks down the field. That's it. So we run these three stations. This first station is normal, we're going to be about five yards apart, okay? And Bruce here, I'm on the left, and, and when I was the head coach at Luther for five years, Bruce actually played for played for me there, so that's why I'm kind of using Bruce right here. And of course, Tom was at UWL there as well, so Tom's going to be the, the offensive man, the blocker, okay, in this situation. The first technique we teach is, we think in stages of you have an avoidance when you're more than 15 yards away from the ball carrier. With that avoidance, you're trying to eliminate contact. You do not want contact. Then we talk about avoidance when you're within that 10 to 15 yards from the ball carrier, coming back that return man. And then the next avoidance comes within 10 yards. So we're going to work all three of those phases within our stations. And what we do is, I'll take uh, one station, uh, Mike Schmidt, our defense coordinator, has one station, and Tyler Simmons, our linebacker coach, has the other station. We just rotate. I kind of run the clock, but I know how many reps we want to get in each station. Boom, we just get them circled around, and that's our time. 
The first one is that I'm going to talk about is what do you do when you're still a long ways away? Okay, outside of 15. And actually got this technique came from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, when we were uh, at Luther, I had a young coach, a guy named Benny Boyd, uh, one heck of a coach, and even a better person. And he came back, and his, I remember his first words out of his mouth was, Mike, we got to put this technique in. This is unbelievable. This is exactly what we need for our kickoff team. We've been running ever since, and Bruce was part of that, and, and played defense back for Benny, so he knows exactly what I'm talking about. All right? And it's called underpad. And that's just, this has come straight from the Steelers and what they teach. So what we're going to do is and we're going to imagine we're going to kick left. So Bruce is coming down. The kick is going left. As Bruce is coming down, here comes the offensive man. What he's going to do is you're going to stand right there because we're not going to do, move this guy at all. He's going to step with his near foot. We're going that way, going to right. There you go. He's going to come in there. He's going to try to step by him. But at the same time, he's going to try to dip and get his back turned to this offensive man. Okay? And part of it is you want to do this as fast as possible so that when we're coming by here, you're coming by, and we're here, and we're stepping through, and you get your back. The goal is I'm looking to see if we can get one penalty a year somebody blocking us in the back from a distance. Okay? That, that's our goal. So what we're going to do on this drill is Bruce coming here, he's going to jog by it and then step through. He works his under pad. And then what we want to try to do is you work the under pad. And one of the things you learn as you do this drill for a while, you're going to do the under pad. The next important phase of it is take this arm that you had dragging behind and throw that back so you end up in a stacked position on the offensive man. Because you want to get the stack. So what, if you kick off return, you don't want that. When you kick off team, you do. So all we're going to do is simply just jog five yards. Bruce is coming. He underpads. He throws right back. And he's coming to stack. And that's the drill. Bruce, would, if we do this on the field, how we do it is Bruce would go. He'd get about five yards past, turn around. Then Tom goes. And then Bruce would go. Then Tom would go. There's a couple things here I'm thinking about driving up here for Thomas Clinic is the transferability. So you're teaching this as a D lineman, you're teaching this as a receiver, you're especially teaching this as a receiver for sure, is to get back into a stacked position on your fade drill, correct? So I know in high school, I've coached high school, you got a lot of guys playing a lot of different positions. So the drill you're using here to avoid him is the same thing you teach your receivers, your pass rush, etc. The other point I'd like to make is is you know, Tom, his role in this drill is to stand there. He doesn't impede him at all, okay? Because I think if you get guys that are thinking it's a combative drill, it's a competitive drill, you want the guy to have confidence in the technique. So it's a defense drill, defense wins. Mm -hmm. Coach your guy up. That guy needs to be coached to not do anything to impede okay. him. Make sense, yes? So that's basically our technique. And it's surprising, uh, this year I went back on film, Boy, oh boy, I started seeing a lot more of it. We finally got a you know, second year to do uh, of guys actually doing it. And I think there was a correlation because we had ended up leading the league in, in kickoff coverage. Okay? If I had to do a little bit more about some of the athletes we had running down in kickoff as well. So that's our, our first drill. The next one is what we do with uh, you're in that 10 to 15 yard range. And, and there's no exact science on that. Okay, but what we're trying to do then is we call a, a stab and shed, and the reason we differentiate because the next one's going to be called shock and shed. This is the stab and shed. This means that we're in that distance where we still want to really maintain everybody in the same lane. All right, so we're we kicked left 100 percent of the time last year. Never changed it. Our kicker felt best. Okay, so we went left. Now, we, we are basically uh, a four or six kind of team, okay? Now, I have calls that one and two can crisscross, or three and four can crisscross, or two and three can crisscross, or six and eight. So I have different schemes according to what you're running, okay? But we always kick left. And so that way our players know which way to avoid 
We're getting established in. We avoid left. We do under pad. We avoid to our left. There's no question of what's happening that way. So it's just something that, that we do. Okay? So now in the next one that we're really going to do, Bruce can do the same thing, except now he's going to stab. When we talk about the stab, is he still wants to keep this left arm free. So he's going to stab his right hand into the peck, right in that peck of Tom right here. He is working this, and what we do is we'll have a coach back there, and we'll have like three or four lines going at one time. Everybody's going to end up in this position, okay? So they're going to stab, and now if he needs, once he sees where the ball carrier is stepping to, he's going to take his other arm, he's going to grab that jersey, grab the bicep, and he's going to pull the blocker to his pocket. All right? So he's right there. So we stab it and pull. Okay? Be violent. Be violent as you pull down. All right? He's going to come off, and we don't have the tackle on this one because it's actually the next phase that we do the tackle part of it. It's just getting by there. We're going to keep doing that. We're going to get those reps, keep rotating around. Uh, guys are in my defensive line talk. No, I hate lines, so we're going to get as many guys going as possible. We're going to spend about two minutes at each station. That's it. So our guys just get lined up and they go. Okay, so that's a stab and shed. The last one is, okay, we're in that area where, all right, this guy could really go in either way. Returner, and we, we know we got to now make the play. We're within 10 yards. Okay? Now we shock and shed. When we do the shock and shed, Bruce can do the same thing, except now both hands are going to come in the chest. We're going to stay as head up as we can because we know we got to play either way. Everybody is doing this. Okay? So now you got to be a football player. We're going to shock this thing right here, and now we're going to try to push back if we can, all right, as best we can. Once the runner you know, determines which way they're going, and we have uh, Coach Smith runs this one, okay? So Mike will have me back here and have like three or four guys. He goes in this direction. Well, Bruce is going to pull that guy into the opposite side, down that pocket, and be ready here. And then we basically run what we call a triangle trap tackle, where they're coming in, and we get multiple guys. So Bruce is the nearest guy. All right. Give me. I need two more volunteers to make this really good. All right now, this ski is going to have Larry going to come out. All right, good. I didn't write it. It's not in Greek, okay? So you should understand. What if I pull a hand? They come over. Just go line right next to them. All right, good. You, Ski, you and Tom are going to be the offensive guy. So now they're both coming up, all right, and they're both going to shot, and now I come this way right here. Well, Bruce is going to pull him down in that direction. You're pulling down here, and you should form up so they're both end up tackling this number, you know, the number that's closest to them. So we're going to compress that ball carrier. If I take off, they come in here, Boom, and now I go in this direction. Oh, no, you just got to shoot out. All right, you take your butt. Okay, now I'm going to coach you up, okay? I'm going here. Which way you got to pull? You got to pull there. Bruce has got to pull there. So they come in here. So you're teaching that release, all right, from the shock and the shed where you're supposed to go. So what would, that's good, guys. You're good. That's it. Good job, Bruce. All right. Those are our three stations we run. Right there. So we come out, and what we'll do is we go kick off. We go. Our guys know that you know we can count our guys one through ten. All right, one, two, and three are always going to this station first. All right, four, five, and six always go to this station, and the rest of the guys go to the other station. Our safety, all right, was always the first guy on the right. Okay, is still going to work on these drills even though he's a safety. Uh, it makes it easier for us. It's not going to stand there. So we do those three three drills. We go two minutes of stations. Boom, boom, boom. Two, four, six. Okay. We're going to get up there. Depending on time of the year, we might take a, a get off. All right? For each one, and then we'll kick one deep. Or two deep for one of the groups. And that's it. And we just work that technique. It doesn't matter what scheme. My job as a you know, special team guy then is got to know which crisscrosses we want to use according to different designs. So I, I want to know who you're doubling, and I want to get my double guy to be crisscross somewhere else. So I'm always going to chart which guy's double to be a double team. That's our 
our kickoff uh, progression. Like, yeah, it works pretty well. I got to throw a story. You threw a story, and I got to throw a story. So like, my first year at Dubuque, this is great. We playing, and we're actually playing out here, up here, okay? And we kicked off, um, first kickoff, it's kind of so-so. All right, yeah, we score again. We're kicking off again. Our kicker, literally, now there's not a drop in the sky. Nothing feels in great shape. You're on turf. Hold that. Takes his foot, kicks, and his feet, he just basically slides. And he goes about five yards. Now, if you know Stan Zwickel, all right, he does not um, hold back and his thought process. He meets that kicker, I think about at the, between the numbers and the half, and walks him all the way back. That kicker, I think, would have been better off at that point going to the other sideline. Okay, he doesn't say we had a new kicker after that. So, uh, for a while, he came back and he actually led our league in extra points and field goals this past year. He's a great kid, great kicker. But that was a sight to be seen. And that kicker has never lived that one down. Yeah, so. Okay. Coach, all yours. Kick off returns. Mike, you can correct me or speak up on this too, is I think as coaches, you look at what are your priorities of kicking game. We don't practice all of our segments the same. We're going to practice PAT field goal punting a lot. We think those are the critical aspects. We're going to practice coverage kickoff a lot and be really good at that. Kickoff return, we're going to get 10 minutes a week probably 10 minutes a week, that's all we get. So I have one return. Well, we run to the left and run to the right, so you have two returns. It's the same freaking return. I mean, if you have six returns, are you kidding me? How do you get good at any of that? So I like the concept of this clinic is that you're not talking about scheme after you talk with anybody about our one scheme. But really, to me, it comes down to the fundamentals and the techniques. Remember a few years ago, I was, when Paul, was first time he was at Wisconsin, his coordinator, Paul Crisp, he and I were talking, I said, so what are some of the new wrinkles and concepts you're trying to do? And he goes, catch the ball better, throw the ball on time. The stuff that Denny's talking about, where's that elbow? You know, it, I think sometimes we overthink this. You know, even at the big time at Wisconsin, um, you really got to get down the fundamentals and execute technique. So need a couple more guys. See you guys, new guys, whatever. You can see use for this or anything? Or, and if you guys want to come closer, you might have to here. One thing we do is start on your knees, guys. Right knee to crotch. Right knee to crotch. And both knees are down. Both okay. knees are down. Okay? Is I really want to try to stress leverage on two planes, horizontally and then vertically as well. And I think I'm biased, of course, because I'm the lead coach on this, but I think this is a, probably one of the hardest things to do in football is to block a guy in open space at full speed. So again, we're going to take, take, it, take them off their feet. Save their legs, not running full every time, just feel like that wears them down, getting bad habits and so forth. What we're trying to teach is leverage. So we have a left return, and Tommy's the offensive player, he's a defensive player, he's gonna set this way, it's half a man. You know, wishbone talking, what we used to say, right, half a man, get your inside half on his outside half. Our friend even had shirts, so we'd, we had a white and red jersey sewn together, Guys that can do this are really be good. So we're trying to get leverage on this plane because the ball is going to the left. So Tommy's the offensive man, so he'll sit his butt back on his heels. The ski stays nice and tall. So now this gives us that vertical leverage. You got to play with bent knees. And we're trying to teach the strike. So if we're going left, his left, his right hand is going to be thumb up, thumb up, elbow in tight, hitting right there. Your outside hand is on the point. So we say peck point. Peck point. Those are the coaching points. I want to see this as coaches. You got to move. I want to see these arms going up, so it's an incline press, not a bench press. Okay. So in the whistle, you're going to strike them three times. Easy. Your friends. Okay. And then reset. Okay. Then I'll say Riverside. They don't move. I move. Okay. Because you get a lot more reps in this way. So now he sits back. Can you sit back? You're up tall. We're going left return. So. I'd like to see that thumb up more on his right hand. And we offset the other way. Now we're going right. He's on offense, he's on defense. Groover set it. Drifting 
thing I want a coach is always looking at their eyes. Where are their eyes? Not looking at the defender's head, but looking at the target and the chest. Now remember, say, get a little closer. Get that thing in an incline now, Ski. Yep. Okay, then we'll get up. Stand up on your feet. Now we progress. So we're getting a ton of reps in in a very short period of time. Now we're going to get back a little bit. He's on offense. I'm going to blow a whistle. He's going to drop this jog. Nice and easy. Get back to about here. It'll be five yards on the first whistle. He's going to buzz his feet. Okay? Offensive drill, offense wins. So you're coming straight down, straight down line. You're not trying to make him miss or anything. You get to that leverage point so your right leg is lined up with his crotch. Okay, so come on back. On a whistle, drop. Second whistle, you go. Straight drop. Or yep, open. straight back. Okay. And on the third whistle, you stop. But you keep your feet going through. Okay? okay. Back, plus your feet. And then punch him. Punch okay, him. I know, third keep your feet going. <laughs> keep your feet going. Okay, then you coach it up. Let's go back again. Get in that fit position. Come on back here, ski it. Yep. Get in that fit. Get your hands on. Okay? Now drop your knees. You stay tall. Yep. So we want this on incline, and I want my head and shoulders back, okay? You say, come on, that's not realistic. Well, first of all, I think from an offense line perspective, if I get my head involved, I'm gonna get beat. I'm not gonna stay in a block, and I'm gonna get sued. I heard a guy from Glenbard West a couple years ago at the Wisconsin Clinic. Are you shitting me? He's teaching guys, I'm gonna put the, the, my bike, my helmet, in that guy's jaw. What? You guys understand where our game is, where the legalities of all this is? Don't teach the head. It's bad technique for a lot of reasons. Okay, that wouldn't go the other way. So you just stay where you are. But you're on offense, you're on defense. First whistle, drop, down, punch. That's the head coach you're getting now. <laughs> 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 it's just a right? <laughs> then we come back, okay? I don't, get, job. I don't get many shots at that coach. I know, I know. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Then when we come back, so we do the same thing when we go off set the other way. That's going to be fine, guys. Thank you. Then we work into, you get the drop in. Guy comes down, up. the defender's trying to work a swim or a pull down. So he's using that kickoff technique that Mike was teaching. We're trying to defend that. Okay, but again, coach him up. This guy wins. You've got to gain confidence in the skill or the technique. If you've got to walk through it until they get confidence in that technique, walk through it. Then pick it up with speed gradually. Okay? First couple times you do it, it's going to be kind of a plus and fuck like everything you do, then you get better at it so you get confidence in the technique, right? Make sense? Okay. Questions? I had one of the things that we also did this year that I think helped us is we took each day, like Tuesday and Wednesday, in pre practice, uh, Mick saw us working with the long snappers. And I kind of let the, we had another guy working with kickers, so I didn't have to really worry about them and the punters I would get to later on. But I would take probably mainly defensive guys on one day, mainly offensive guys who run special teams the other day. And we work, we actually worked this drill, but with the concept of the guys who were on kickoff team would focus on their kickoff technique. So one day, a couple reps would be under pad, a couple reps of stab and check, a couple reps of, of, of shock and shed, and then also work hard to coach up at the same time the guy who was just dropping back and working where they're going to be, where their initial contact was. It, it was more of a competitive thing, but it wasn't full, full speed, but it was, it was pretty good. And we'd actually run this back in the corner, so I'd start one guy from the, from the sideline, uh, I'd start one guy about three yards off, the guy would flip around at the numbers, and we'd have a ball carrier back there, so we'd have basically four guys in every line. We just kept rotating guys through. So in, in about five minutes, we got extra reps because Mick and I both know there's only going to be so much time for special teams within our practice plan. And so we want to keep working our techniques any chance we have, and that allowed us some extra practice time this year, which I really liked. So if we have a 10 minute segment on kickoff return, I'll, I'll get five minutes with we'll what we call indie individual, like we were just doing with these two guys. Then we got five minutes to try to get six to eight reps in with the whole team. Like you gotta really be humping now, and you can't take time to coach them then, 
You coach off film or as we say always the coach speak, coach on the run. But you have just bang, 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 you have it scripted. This team's in, here's the card for that scout kickoff look for that opponent, this is what they're doing, so forth. Just get those reps in and then try to evaluate the best you can to film. So I always tell my guys, there aren't any mulligans. This isn't golf with Coach Mick. Play a slap pick golf. You gotta get your turn right. You might have two or three chances this week to do this rep. And if you screw it up on Saturday, guess what? We're gonna find somebody else to go in there for that for that spot. I mean that's just the way you gotta do it, I think. A um, couple other thoughts I have, guys, on as Mike said, I work with the snappers. The team within the team, and this might be, I might be completely full of shit on this, but after 30 years of this now, I really believe, because we use a four-man surface on our PAT field goal protection. We have two wings on the same side. I don't think that guy in our league, or in Division Three college, could block that if your time is good, if he's never blocked. In fact, we'll take our tight end on the four-man edge and step down. Because to me, that elephant protection is the most something if you do, they can't get inside there. Whoever that guy is, he cannot get there in 1.25 or less. I don't think he can. I might be wrong. If you ask my wife, I'm full of shit. She might say yes. If you ask my first wife, for sure, for sure she'll say yes. <laughs> Coach, question on the technique. Why the thumb up? What's the reason behind that? I think it's the same thing we try to teach, well, defensive line, offensive line, blocking. Is you've got so much more power, and I'm not a fire guy, I was an art teacher, so the fire guys can tell me, Steve, you've got more power with your elbow in here than you do here, correct? Right. So we always teach, we want to strike with our thumbs up. Yes, Mike? Yeah. Defense line, offense line, it's all the same thing except we get snap count on offense. That's it. Nick, are you foot to foot? What's that? Are you foot to foot? No. Well, get about a six foot. inch split. So we want to make that a little bit longer yeah. there. Yeah. Now we go one, two, five in our PAT field goal. And I think it's kind of a Goldilocks thing. I think you don't want to be too fast either because we coach our kickers. He's got to start that approach before the ball's down. I don't think there's any other way you can do that. If, if you wait till the ball's <coughs> placed and then start, you're, it's going to be really hard to get one, two, five. Don't you think, Mike? Yep. I mean, it's almost impossible. So we got our guys, they practice a lot. They're down to 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and sometimes that's too fast. So we don't want it too fast. We don't want it too slow. We want it Goldilocks, just right. 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, right there is good. Our punt operation time, snapper, punt, get off is 2. 2 is our target. I'd like to be closer to 2, but we're at 15 yards. And we never kick in a team situation without the stopwatch, never. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me to say to guys, go and get with a whistle and you want a whistle, or we want a one, two, five, and nobody's got a stopwatch out there. Get a stopwatch. You know, be on that every time. So, questions? Overload, extra point field goal, <coughs> make a difference between college hash, high school hash. I don't want you to get to the hash where you're overloading. Yep. Don't see it as much in high school. Yep. Hash difference, what's your thoughts on that? Yep, we absolutely, uh, is this a 12 or 10, Mike? 12. 12 yard line and in for a hash mark will overload. We also bring the snap in, directional snap in a little bit. So probably at two feet, bring it in off the hash. So the snapper is bringing that ball inside a little bit, opens up that angle, that target will be in the but not, not outside the 12, 10, 12, no. 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 Stay balanced. Yeah. Stay down. Okay. Yeah. If you were a wider, high school hash, if you were a wider, would you back that number yeah, up I a little bit? I think you'd have to. I think you'd have to, but I would not have to look, run the math on it, to be honest with you, before I would tell you exactly where I would do it. So. The other thing I'd say, just in general, guys, not necessarily just special teams drills, but just coaching in general, is Heard Tom Osborne say this at the Wisconsin Clinic a couple of years ago, and, I, and this, gosh, this just resonates with me to my core, is you can never win enough. You can never win enough. So you better figure out whatever else that is and how you're shaping these young guys and making them better men. And Mike and I are big into Joel Airman and inside out coaching and that. I really believe that. I totally believe that. Because if you're just focused on winning, Oh my God, this game will eat you up and spit you out and you won't be in very long because it is brutal. So 
you can never win enough. Understand that this is a journey and the virtue really lies in the struggle, not the price. I really, really, really believe that. But I really thank each and every one of you guys for staying in it too. Stay in this game because I think when I hear some stuff, I could not go back to high school. I hear some of the stuff you got to deal with the parents. Holy shit. That's unbelievable to me. I just really feel for you guys to tip my cap to you for hanging in there. Hanging in there because it's the best game ever. And if we didn't have you guys, man, oh man, those kids are lost. So, questions? Anything else, Tommy? Great stuff. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks.